take number 10. Yo, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna do another light the scene breakdown, which we've done in the past. So if you guys haven't followed my channel for some time, technically what I do is bring you guys along with me and show you guys the value of production lighting and then compare that to regular house lights. Just stepping into a place, you know, just shooting it that way and then shooting it with production lighting to show you guys the value of it. So right now what I'm about to do is start lighting up each light. We're gonna hit the first light right now and that's the one that hits the vending machine. We're gonna hit the second light and that's the one that's gonna hit the payphone. And then slowly you guys are gonna start seeing each light just kind of do its thing and just start bringing ambient lighting to the background to really, you know, so you guys are able to see for yourselves if you guys like the production lighting. Again, there's different ways of going about it. This is just the style that I went with today. So if you guys wanna stick around, feel free to do so. Let's get started. So the first thing is first, as I always mention in my other videos on the other light to scene breakdowns is make sure you guys turn off the house lights. So right now I'm gonna show you guys an example with the house lights and with production lighting. And you guys will see the difference. It's a major difference. You can't do that. If you were to leave the house lights on and then add all these lights on to the way you guys are viewing it, it's not gonna look like that. A, the, the house lights is gonna counter with all the colored lighting and just any lighting in general. So it's gonna be pretty flat. And if there's a blue, for example, on the payphone or we got red on the bottom, it's gonna overpower it or at least blend it together. So you're not gonna get these type of colors you guys are watching. Right now, let's go ahead and get started on each light, what it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off everything, keep the main key light on. And I'm just gonna take you step by step to show you guys what each light did and why I placed it like that. So as I said in the beginning of the video, the first light that I used to, to begin with is the light that's hitting me right now, which is the main key light. And that is the Forza 150B, the NAND light. And then we also have a softbox and a grid to hit me straight down. The reason why you put the grid on or the honeycomb grid or however you want to name it is because that allows you to control the lighting. If I take out that honeycomb grid from the softbox, it's going to spread a lot more and you're not going to get the colors or the control lighting that you want. So make sure if you guys want to control the lighting as it, as it is right now, notice how nothing's showing in the background is because I have the honeycomb grid. So now that we did that, let's go ahead and hit the first light. So the first light right now that you guys are watching is the Nanlite Forces 60 and I'm using it with a projector. And the reason why I recommend this projector is because the way you could shape the light. So right now I literally just shaped it so it can hit the vending machine. So it's just straight on. Again, give me control with the image in the background. So that was the first light. It was the Forces 60 with the projector. So for the second light, this is going to be the Forces 60C. Same thing with the projector and I'm only hitting the payphone. So the Forza 60C, the benefit of it, if you guys have not looked into it, it's a new light that Nanlite just came out with. It's full RGB and it's app control. So you can control everything from it and it allows you to do effects, different type of looks. For this one, we just wanted to go ahead and just add blue to it. So if you guys want these type of looks where you're able to just control and hit different pieces, then just keep in mind, you're gonna need the Forza 60 projector and you're able to use on the 60C, on the 150B, with the 150, you know, there's all these different lights that are able to use these attachments. They do make one also for the Bowens mount, but for this one right here, I think it's called the FM mount, if I'm correct. So now that I chose what I wanted to hit, the next thing is I wanted to start showing detail of everything that's behind me. So I started using these Pavel tools for the Nanlite, which are the 15X. So the first one that I'm gonna go to hit right now it's gonna be the one that kind of just placed on top of the trash can. I'll show you guys the bureau as I'm talking about it. But right off the bat, you guys watch as it just turned on, it started hitting the background and it looks cool. You know, it started showcasing, you know, the graffiti, the posters, but the bottom side is a little too dark. So I went ahead and placed another 15X on the bottom and I put legs on there. And right away, you guys saw that now the speakers are, you know, showing a little bit more. Still wanted to keep it contrasty, still wanted to keep it moody. But again, it was enough to just showcase it and start implementing a little bit more of the scenery. So those are those two lights. So now the next light that I'm gonna hit is gonna be this bottom one here. And this one, another Nanlite Power 2 15X. So right off the bat, we're onto the third Power 2 15X. We're gonna have a few more, but this is to show you guys, if you guys wanna make things easier, the 15X or the 30X, the new Nanlites, they're pretty clutch, they're battery operated and you can control them via app. So keep that in mind, they definitely do help when it comes to lighting your set. So we ended up placing it in the bottom and that was just to cast a light because I wanted to show these crates. So that was the reason why I placed it in the bottom. I could have put it on a leg and just kind of have them standing like these two over here, but I just wanted just to hit the bottom. So 
you know, I feel like that did the best job for me. Some of this is running gum, but just enough to show you guys, you know, give you guys a glimpse of what it looks like when you're controlling lighting. So that's the third power tube that I'm showing right now. So now we're gonna go on to the fourth power tube, which again, it's another 15X, the one right behind the vending machine. I went with a tungsten color. And the reason why I wanted a light back there, again, there was no detail, it was super contrasty. And I wanted separation for me that I'm sitting right here. So let's just say if you guys were to have an artist, you know, you guys are already starting to have separation. You guys are showing the environment. And again, RGB color, this is all preference wise. This is just me showing you guys how I'm just like lighting it up within the moment. And then the last light for me personally that I needed to add in there, cause uh, again, it does a difference, is right behind the payphone. So right now, as you guys just watched, it turned on and it does a lot. It definitely provides and it definitely hits the wall a little bit more. And now you guys are watching for the most part, the whole scene kind of lit up in a certain aesthetic look, certain mood. Uh, again, I could do it, you know, different colors. I can go tungsten if I want to. It really just comes down to you as a creator, how you guys want to light it up. I'm just breaking it down to show you guys the, the value of it. So let me go ahead and show you guys again, one by one, each step, what each one did. And then from there, you know, show you guys side by side, just regular house lights where you just walk into this place and it looks just standard and with production lighting. So you guys can just see it. So let's go ahead and just do that one by one and uh, we'll be back. So that's pretty much it. There you have it. Another light to scene breakdown in the bodega set. So my goal is I want to start doing these light to scene videos in different LA studios. So if you guys are following this channel and you guys are in LA and have studios of your own, make sure you guys DM me on Instagram, which is at Mario Visions. I'll be happy to go there and just, you know, have some fun. If you guys like this video, drop it a like, comment. If you guys have any questions on this, if it was bad, if it was good, let me know. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace out guys. We rolling? And that's how you guys get it done. I stuttered, I took like 12 takes. It was 12 takes. I kept repeating myself, but hey, when you guys are doing this YouTube thing, as I'm trying as well, it's not gonna be easy. You're gonna stutter, you're gonna mess up, but just keep trying, keep doing it. And realistically, just have fun at the end of the day. This is fun. It's a little stressful because you wanna get the video out, but yeah, got it done. That's the most important thing, get it done. Peace out.